Welcome back to Landa's house. It's Mike John here. Um, as you can see from the title, today's video is going to be a bit of a different video than our normal content. It's been a little bit of time, but I recently got my driver's license in Japan and I wanted to make this video specifically because when I was doing research during my process of getting a driver's license in Japan, there wasn't a lot of information specifically about Tochi. I went through this driver's license process during the pandemic, so please bear that in mind when I am talking about my experience because I'm sure there are some things that are going to be changed or were changed prior to me starting the process due to COVID-19. I specifically am from America. I am not one of the West countries as the internet calls it. As somebody with an American driver's license, I had to go through something called Gaikoku Menkyo Kirikai, Gaimen Kirikai for short. So that translates to foreign driver's license transfer. So that's the process that I went through because I have a driver's license in a country outside of Japan. I'm going to try to stay as organized as I can. So let's kind of get into the broad routes that you can take. Route one, you don't have a driver's license at all. If you do not have a driver's license, you will end up having to go through all of the Japanese driver's schools, practicing tests, exams, everything just like a Japanese citizen. If you do have a driver's license or you had a driver's license, and I'm gonna specifically say had because if the driver's license that you brought with you or that you have on hand is expired, basically in their eyes, you don't have a driver's license. So you would end up going to route one. Route two will be the Gaikoku Menkyo Kirikai that I went through, Gai Menkyo Kirikai for short. So for the Gaikoku Menkyo Kirikai specifically, I am from America, which is not a blessed country as they call it on the internet. There are some countries where you will basically be done with the process very, very quickly, but America is not one of the blessed countries, so I had to go through the whole process. In Japan, the driver's center, which would be basically the DMV equivalent, the driver's center is actually a branch of the police. Everything that you do is going to be exactly the same. You're gonna follow the same rules and regulations. The only thing that's gonna differ is basically timing. And when I say timing, I mean you're allowed to take this test on this day, but maybe you're not allowed to take that test on the same day. Well, in other prefectures, you can. That's going to be the difference. Me, being an American, not being one of the blessed countries, I had to go through the long process. So on the very first day, I went to the driving center at 8.30 when doors open, and I had to find this like clipboard and sign up. You go to the driver's center at 8.30 when doors open to sign up for your interview slash paperwork review. Now, the reason why you have to go at 8.30 when the doors open is because interviews actually start in the afternoon and they close on time. So that means there's only a limited amount of time to do your interview process. So they'll only allow a certain amount of people to go to and do the interview process. So you go there at 8.30, sign up. Obviously, there's a lot of time until the afternoon. So what I did was I went to JAF during that time. And JAF is something that you're going to need to do regardless before you're in interview paperwork review process. It's just up to you when you want to go. So JAF. So JAF is the Japan Automobile Federation. So what JAF does for us basically is you bring your foreign driver's license, you give it to them and they translate it for you into Japanese so that you know the people at the driver's center can really understand what your driver's license allows you to do in that foreign country. Yeah, there wasn't a wait at all. I think I got lucky, but either way, it only took 40, 45 minutes. So I was, you know, back on the road to go back to the driver's center very quickly. I was able to grab a quick bite to eat and I was on my way to the interview paperwork review process. So basically what you need for your interview slash paperwork process is your passport, your foreign driver's license, international driver's permit if you have one, the paperwork that you just got at JAF. Quick note, I failed to mention that during the paperwork Portion that you need something called a Ju Min Hyo. So basically that is a piece of paper that shows your residency. It's gonna have the date that you moved into the city and where you were before if you've moved within Japan. If not, then it's just gonna have your current address. You can only go to the driver center where you are resident of. So in Tochigi, there's only one driver's center. If you do not live in Tochigi, you don't go there. And if you live in Tochigi, you don't go anywhere else. 
and last the three months proof that you existed in the country that you got your driver's license in. So me having an American driver's license, I just needed at least three months proof that I lived in America after I got my driver's license and before the date stamped onto my passport of when I got into Japan. Usually they are looking for the most recent three months since you have arrived in Japan. So say you arrived in July, they're gonna be looking for June, May, April. They basically want that proof to show that you were driving in the country that you got your driver's license. But the things that you show as verification does not have to be car related at all. I showed them my credit card statements and my cell phone bill. Now, maybe only one of them was enough, but I was told from the get go that Tochigi is very, very strict with their process. So I went with both. I personally printed out six months worth of both. Now, this is the reason why if you have plans to go to Japan and get your driver's license just because you don't have it now doesn't mean you should just go out and get it. If you cannot provide those three months of verification, it doesn't matter, you won't be able to do it. I was able to get it cleared and approved in one time. I was told that there are people who actually have to go back and get their paperwork reviewed because they couldn't get it through on the first time. Either way, be prepared, bring extra. So after you get all of that approved, you finally get to pick a day for your exam. Now, before you get to pick a day for your exam, you have to choose what kind of exam you're taking. In Japan, you get to choose between an automatic transmission and manual transmission. These are separate driver's licenses. In Japan's hierarchy of driver's licenses or vehicles, an automatic transmission is below a manual transmission driver's license. So if you get an automatic driver's license, you are not allowed to drive a manual transmission car. If you get a manual transmission, you are allowed to drive an automatic car because it is below, it is under in this hierarchy of vehicles and driver's licenses. So keep that in mind. So if you have these Tokyo Drift dreams and you want to drive manual, you need to get a manual transmission driver's license. Okay, so then your appointment day comes, you're allowed to take the exam. You have to get there at 8.30 in the morning when doors open. Once you sign up, you do have to do a few things. You have to make sure you have a, a recent photo. And usually driver centers have like this little um, kiosk where you can take your photo, you just have to glue it right on. And you have to turn in your paperwork at that time and they'll tell you come back at 10 a.m. and they'll go ahead and test your vision and hearing. And after everybody finishes their hearing and vision, you will go ahead and take the written portion of the exam. There's only 10 questions, but you only have to get a 70%. I want to say that a lot of these questions are common sense, but the original test was written in Japanese, and I believe they directly translated it over to different languages. When it's in English, there's a lot of times when there's double negatives. So it'll be like, you can not not do whatever. There was a question where I really thought it was a typo, but I remember watching a video saying that because they do this translation thing, if you think it's a typo, it's most likely not. Just go with how it's written and really try to make sure you're not tricked up by these words and read it carefully. Because like I said, there's only 10 questions, like there's the same test in many different languages. So even if your main language is not Japanese or English, they'll probably still have a test for you. So after you pass the written exam, they will go ahead and give you a piece of paper which has a blueprint of the driving course. And I'm going to be honest, the driving course to me look like a go-kart course, except a little bit more elaborate with, you know, traffic lights and stop signs and all that kind of stuff and crosswalks. So the, when they give you this blueprint, they will tell you you have to go to a certain room and you have course number uh, 71. And you go into this room and it has these thick hefty binders and you'll have to find course number 71 and then you have to basically write the course onto your blueprint. You have an hour to actually walk the course. If anybody's accompanying you, they are not allowed on the course with you. It's only the person who's taking the driver's exam and they actually do check. You're allowed to walk this course. I highly, highly recommend you memorize this course before you start walking and try to walk it without looking at the paper as much as you can. Now, anybody who's been driving knows that you driving and walking the same 
same thing. It's super different, even though it is the same exact course. Either way, I still think it's beneficial for you to walk the course. Take your time, do it twice, maybe even three times. You have a whole hour. Use your time wisely. After that, at a certain time, the instructors, policemen, officers, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna call them instructors. So these instructors will come into the room where that thick binder was to basically tell you that they're ready for you. Usually there's around three or four inspectors there to do the exams. Quick side note, you do not drive your own car for this exam. You will drive the cars that they provide you at the driver's center. So let's talk about the practical exam. There's something called an S-curve, which I'm sure you guys can kind of picture. It's an S curve, a curve that's shaped like an S. But the thing is, is there's medians going around it and there's these poles suspended on springs all going all around it. Obviously, even if your tires don't go over any of the medians, if you touch it, these bars will swing back and forth and they will tell all your secrets. It is an automatic fail if you go over any of the median. I believe that it is deductions if you make the bars swing. Either way, don't do either. Now, they have the same system of the medians and the suspended bars with something called a crank. It is basically the same as an S-curve, except it's not a curve, it is right angles. So it'll be, you enter, right angle, and then you exit right angle. Like I said, there are these suspended bars and they will tell all of your secrets. These are the two most difficult things on the foreign drive practical exam. Here's some after notes and thoughts. Your written exam is only good for six months. I understand that everybody can't just take off days left and right, so if you're gonna space them out, make sure you do them within six months, because if not, you'll have to take the written test again. In Japan, there is a law that you have to have the beginner driver's sticker, magnet, whatever you want to call it, that mark has to be on your vehicle, both the front and the back, for one year after you get your driver's license. If you get caught without it, that could be a ticket, fine, or a suspension of your driver's license. I know that this sign, it's known for street racing, whatever, in the States, but don't get it twisted. It is a beginner's mark. Hopefully this wasn't too long a video. Thank y'all for watching. Come back next time to our house. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions about Tochigi Prefecture specifically, go ahead and drop them down. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If it's Japan uh, as a whole, I may not have the answers, but I'll try to get back to you. Okay, thanks. See y'all next time. Bye.